guys, this is Not Lambs of Invoked 101 and welcome back. So today what I got for you guys is a Paleo Frog deck. This is a deck that I actually put together pretty quickly. Uh, quick shout outs, big shout out to Adrian. He helped me, uh, he actually traded me the vast majority of the core for this deck. So big shout out to him. Uh, and a uh, shout out to uh, Colin down at uh, Chaos Games. He told me about a couple tech choices to play in this deck. So I'm playing those and it's worked out pretty well. I do like the tech choices that... Um, he told me about. So shout out to Adrian, shout out to Colin. Anyways, uh, before we get into the actual deck profile, down in the comments below we have a link to our Discord. Uh, you guys can join that, the general chat is open. Also down there is a link to our Patreon. Anything you guys donate to us uh, from there goes right back into the deck profiles. And there should be a new link to our Instagram down there. And also we have shirts available. Uh, you guys can message us on Discord or Instagram uh, to order your shirt. They're ordered directly through us, but uh, there should be a picture of it on screen. If you guys are interested in those, check them out. Message us if you want to get one. They're 15 bucks. But uh, at the time of recording, we do have 10 pre-order spots open, so you can get it for $10. Anyways, without further ado, we're going to move the uh, spells and traps and the extra deck off to the side. We're going to talk about the monsters real quick. All right, so the first guy we got going on is Triple Swap Frog. So Swap Frog is pretty dope. What you can do is you can discard one water monster to special summon him from your hand. When he's normal or special summoned, you can uh, send one level two aqua monster from your deck to the graveyard. And then he has another effect where you can pick up another monster you control, return it to the hand, and then gain an extra normal summon for a frog monster that is not Swap Frog. So uh, he does a lot for the deck. He's also the main like a uh, starter card. Very cool little guy. Very awesome card. Uh, after that, we got Triple Dupe Frog. Dupe Frog is a friendly little boy. Uh, he's a, he's my favorite one. Um, so his effect is that uh, I've. His effect is that he is like a, a lightning rod, so your opponent has to attack him first, and then I think I wonder if it's if he's just sent. Uh, when this card is sent from field to the graveyard, you can add a frog, except Duke Frog or Frog the Jam from your deck or graveyard to your hand. So yeah, so he, uh, so if you link him away, you get a search, which is pretty dope. And then, uh, oh, he's also Death Frog on the field, uh, on the field. Uh, so anyways, lastly, we have Ronin Toten. Ronin Toten is the samurai. He's also the, uh, you know, the third frog you play. So... His effect is that you can banish one frog monster from your graveyard and special summon this card. It is not a once per turn, which is insane. And he just helps a lot with just continuing uh, link spam and XZ summoning. It's nuts. Um, so, and then lastly, we have the tech choice, which is triple absolute king uh, backjack. Uh, so what backjack does is when he's sent to the graveyard, uh, you can... Uh, look at the top three cards of your deck, put them back in any order, and then his other effect is that on your opponent's main, during your opponent's main phase, you can banish this card, uh, reveal the top card of your deck, and if it's a normal trap, you can set it, and it can be activated this turn. He's actually, like, insane. I, I love this card, because you can instantly trigger him just by um, summoning Link Rebo. So, uh, there we go. That's it for the monsters. Uh, those are the only monsters I play, because those are realistically the only ones you need to play. Move those off the side. Let's talk about the trap lineup because uh, I only play two spells in the deck. I guess I could talk about the spells real quick. Uh, I just play two Pot of Desires. I don't really see the need to play any other spell in the deck, and so this is just some more draw power. All right, now for the traps. Uh, triple Paleozoic Olenoids. So all the Paleozoics uh, share similar effects. So. All the Paleozoics want, have the effect of once per chain, you can, uh, when a trap card is activated, you can special summon it from the graveyard as a monster. It is not treated as a trap card, and it's a monster with the effect of being unaffected by other monster effects, and it has 1200 zero level two aqua. So uh, they all summon themselves, but then they also have a unique, a unique effect when they're a trap card. So uh, Olenoids here is a MST. He pops a spell or trap. And then... We have Paleozoic Dynamishkus. Uh, Dynamishkus is also one of the really good ones. His effect, his uh, trap effect is that you can uh, target a card on the field, uh, discard one card, and then banish that card. So very cool. And then of course, you know, monster effect. Uh, next up, we have Triple Paleozoic uh, Candia. Uh, Candia is uh, just a Book of Moon. It just flips something face down, which is a uh, pretty dope. 
And the last Paleozoic I run at three is Triple Lincholia. Uh, Lincholia has the effect of targeting one banished card and returning it to the graveyard. So uh, Lincholia can act, can interact with uh, Pot of Desires, which is the main reason why I'm playing the three. If it didn't interact, uh, interact with Pot of Desires, I'd probably only play like one or two. Uh, next up, a little bit more draw power. This is two Paleozoic Pakia. Uh, Pakia has the effect of, it's basically just a destiny draw. You discard a Paleozoic card and then draw two cards. So uh, it also has my favorite artwork of any Paleozoic, and I, I have thought about getting supers of that one just because I like it. And then uh, we have the one of, which is one Morello, which just sends a trap from deck to grave, and one uh, Hallucigenia, which is a shrink. It cuts the uh, monster's attack and defense in half. So uh, Hallucigenia used to have my favorite one because I think he looks spooky. Uh, but that's it for the Paleozoic uh, cards in the deck. Uh, as for other traps, because you know we got to play more traps to trigger the stuff. Uh, Three, Reckless Greed. Reckless Greed is nuts. It basically just lets you draw and draw and draw. It's actually just Pot of Greed in this deck. Uh, so what its effect is, is you draw two cards but skip your next two draw phases. It doesn't matter if you have multiple Reckless Greeds or a Pekaya or a uh, Pot of Desires. It's just, it's it's great. Uh, alongside that, the other three of Trap I run is Triple Mind Crush. This is just because everything, everything, everything searches so minecraft is always live uh i was playing i was at uh our casual locals down at chaos i was playing minecraft and my opponent had a had chaos form and i was just like man i wish i had my minecraft set right now uh, i actually didn't get to pull it off but i wish i did which was uh, like he'd activated ritual spell and i would have mind crushed it out of his hand but i actually i didn't get to uh, for the two of traps, I play two Waking the Dragon. Uh, Waking the Dragon is really good uh, right now because a lot of people are playing back row hate, so I, I play the two of those just to uh, get some cool stuff out of my extra deck. Uh, then two Lost Wind. I would bump this to three. I just honestly don't know what to play, and I'm already playing like 44 cards. So, but yeah, a Lost Wind is pretty insane just because it lets you uh, re it resets itself, so it lets you trigger a bunch of Paleozoic cards. And then lastly, two Fuse Line. I was playing F Fuse Line. I put it in here just because I needed filler cards. I put it in and I actually really enjoyed it uh, because basically all you do is you just set it in the uh, two zones, in the Spell and Trap zones in front of the uh, Extra Monster zone and it lets you pop a card in, the, in this card's column. So Fuse Line uh, I ended up using to great advantage in this deck. Uh, but yeah, so that's it for the Spells and Traps and also the main deck. Uh, I like the card choices I got. Like I said, I would probably bump the uh, the lost one to three, though. But uh, the monster lineup, the spell lineup, and the traps I'm all pretty happy with. Now we get to the extra deck, and my extra deck isn't quite finished yet. There is some stuff that I do want to play and just some stuff that I want to bump up, but this is what I got right now. So uh, to start, one, totally awesome. I want to play two. I just don't have a second one, and I don't know anyone who's trading a second one. So, uh, But... Uh, one Toad for now. I would play, I definitely would recommend playing two. Uh, and then I'm playing Triple Anomacalgris. This should really only be a one of. Uh, it doesn't really need to be at three. Uh, one that I do think does need to be at three, though, and I might leave it this way, is Apabenia. So Apabenia has the effect of being able to search a Paleozoic card. Oh, no, its effect is you can activate Paleozoic traps from the hand, but uh, it has a bonus effect of if it has a trap card as as Xyz material you can uh, you can uh, search a Paleozoic from your deck, which is pretty dope. And then I run the Waking the Dragon target, which is a Ultimate Falcon. Figured no reason not to play it, because I'm running Waking the Dragon. And then lastly, uh, Mistar Boy, which I would recommend bumping up to two and also adding a Proxy Dragon. I think uh, two Mistar Boy and one Proxy Dragon be good and then i also want to play two link Kribo because uh, i only have one uh, yes uh one is all i need because i can tribute the backjack for the link Kribo uh to do other things but i would like to play at least one more uh but yeah so that's my extra deck for right now for the paleozoics and that's also it for right now for paleo all right yeah so i really like this deck i think it's super fun to play and i know it's not like ooh, i know it's not like the most competitive version of paleo and it's not like uh, it's not going to top a regional or anything anytime soon, 
at least not this version of it, but I had a lot of fun putting this deck together and I do enjoy playing it and I'm glad to add this deck to my collection as uh, something I really enjoy is playing decks that I've never played before or that I played a different version of. Like, I played pure Paleozoic without the frogs before and playing with the frogs, I definitely prefer this version over it. And uh, so, uh, also, people uh, like to know how much I paid for a deck. Uh, in the comment, people are ask a lot how much a deck costs. Uh, you could probably scoop up Paleozoics for about 30 bucks for the main deck. I paid $10 for almost all the frogs minus dupes, but uh, most of the frogs are 2 to $3 a piece. So you're probably looking at um, anywhere from 10 to $30 for the frogs. Uh, and then the Paleozoic cards themselves are probably only, uh, if you get the common ones, they're only like 10 bucks uh, for the entire core, if that. And then uh, I know Toad is like three to four bucks, so uh, you're probably looking at like a $30, $40 deck. It's not too expensive. Uh, but yeah, so like I said, uh, in the description, there is a link to our Discord, our Patreon, and our Instagram. We also have shirts available if you guys want to get those. And then uh, leave in the comments oh, what I can do to make this deck better. I'm always trying to improve the decks. And I want to thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video.